welcome guys this is Warit Al Ma'wali I'll be talking about PC security and how to secure your personal computer and data involved on it so first of all I always encourage people to understand how an attacker would uh, think so if you understand the way he thinks you'll be able to use the proper tools in order to defend yourself from uh, many types of attacks there is no 100% security when it comes to IT but you try to minimize the risks as much as possible so I'm going to take you through the defense layers that I normally use and I would encourage anyone to use in order to be safe so the first layer is when it comes to your PC you should always encrypt your PC so you would always have your BIOS password uh, set up that's uh, first layer of defense on top of that I would have VeraCrypt which I explained on a previous video and with VeraCrypt I would encrypt my entire C drive where Windows boots and I would encrypt any external drive that I use so none of my data will be exposed uh, to anyone unless they have the proper keys uh, to access them so you would always uh, encrypt your stuff and make sure your main PC is encrypted so once you put in your uh, uh, BIOS password you should always be asked for VeraCrypt password and that is double encryption uh, of course you can have uh, external hard disks which are encrypted and have as well as uh, hidden uh, containers on them I've explained that on a previous video so you can watch that for more details about VeraCrypt I wouldn't use this is the second uh, layer or third layer of defense I wouldn't use my main PC for browsing the internet so I would always use VMware so VMware is a software tool that can virtualize operating systems so you can have more than one operating system running at well at once it all depends on on how powerful is your PC and the amount of RAM you're having so for me I can run even 8 to 10 uh, op different operating system at once with no with no issues and why would I do that because whatever infects an operating system which is hosted by VMware it wouldn't if affect your main operating system so 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 I would always encourage you encrypt your C drive you have a VMware running with a different OS so it can be your host can be Windows uh, 8 and your VM could be Windows 10 or the other way around so it, it works in both way or you can have Linux as a host machine and the VM would be Windows so it all depends on your needs always I would encrypt the VM so VM itself has an option to encrypt uh, the VM image so I would always encrypt it so so once I'm done with, with creating VM I make sure that it's encrypted I take a snapshot of it so I would always have a VM uh, running for internet so I would serve the net and within a week or two weeks I would just revert to the previous snapshot where it was clean with no activity and that makes sure because I test a lot so I might get infected anytime so that makes sure that uh, makes sure that you are you're not uh, you're not uh, carrying on with the infected VM all the way so you always have to revert back to your your old uh, snapshots and uh, once you're done with that I would always encourage you to to back up your main host where you have windows so so not I'm not talking about VM VM you've already backed it up through snapshot but your main host which is running VM and some simple it is on on your main host you you don't install anything you don't install uh, Microsoft Office you don't install any other program it's just you have your main application which I'll be telling you it should be 
Veracrypt, VMware, and some of uh, firewalls and defensive tools that I'll be mentioning later. You should uh, back it up, and I use Acronix, Acronis. So Acronis is a very powerful uh, backup tool that would take an image of your physical drive and, and back it up. Of course, there's an encryption uh, option on it, so you encrypt also your backup. So if anyone finds your backup, even though it has nothing on it, but I would always back it up. Uh, I would always encrypt it while backing it up. Why? Because if anyone can read the image, they can always inject something into it. So once you restore, you have an it was clean, but someone got access to it. And when you restored it, it has something on it. So, so always, when, if you, this is like a thumb uh, rule. If you, if you have encryption option on any software, use it. So with VMware, I've seen people, they were able to access the VM images and inject on them, even though the, the VM wasn't running. So it is possible to do it. So always protect the VM with a password. I would always store the VM image images that that i'm using into veracrypt container so so there is no way you could access my vms without having the proper uh, password of uh, of the veracrypt and the vm protection as well so when it comes to acronyx i would back up my host and uh, i would store it in encrypted mode so if you ask me how about how about what do you use? I mean, to to back up from from your host machine to external disk. Well, I don't use Acronix for that. I use for I mean to transfer files. I'm not talking about host machine. I'm talking about daily use files. When it comes to your photos, your spreadsheets, whatever, uh, um, blockchain blockchain keys. Uh, I would always use. Uh, Good Sync Explorer. It's a free software you can use, and you can uh, you can uh, give it two hard disks, so you can have two external hard disks which you want to synchronize, and it will synchronize from one to the other. It would check for the changes, and it would take from the new changes and put it on the other disk. So you would have a mirror of both without losing any data, and also you can choose the size of uh, of synchronizing synchronization so I think it's a very powerful tool you can, I recommend it as well and in terms of protecting my data what what if the your office catches fire I mean and you lose everything so something has to go to the cloud and for that I use uh, cloudberry backup of course with Google near uh, near line uh, service uh, Google Cloud so what I would do is I wouldn't of course uh, uh, Google Near Line has its own encryption, but of course, if they provide you the encryption, it's not end to end. They have the keys if they want to store them, so I wouldn't trust them. So I would have the CloudBerry backup encryption on with my own key. So the file is moved, files are moved from here to Google Near, Near Line, and they're encrypted. And of course, Google Near, Near Line service would have another encryption on it. So that's two encryption. And if I'm having sensitive uh, data, I wouldn't move the file as they are. I would have them in a container, in a very Veracrypt container. So the container would be moved to the cloud and it is encrypted. Uh, of course, uh, before you take a snapshot of your VM or you back up your host through Acronis, I would always check for fake certificates you know there's many application that would would uh, uh, install uh, their self on a pc and they would always you know some developers are lazy and some people are intending to harm you by installing uh, fake certificates so i would always have a tool to check those fake certificates and the tool i use is rcc which is a root certificate check and it would scan your pc and tell you if there's uh, fake certificate or untrusted certificate and of course you can run uh, beside that there is a tool called uh, CertWatch and if there is 
any certificate which has been installed recently it will pop up and tell you there's a certificate it's very important to have that to, av to avoid man in the middle attack and yeah that's that's another topic okay so what would you have on your host and on your vms as a protection so i have double protections so what I, don't you have a firewall uh, what if don't you have antivirus yes i do use so my best choice of uh, antivirus is uh, Bitdefender. Of course, it has its disadvantages. Sometimes I would exclude some folders not to be scanned and it would go and scan it and detect uh, some tools that I've been working on. So, so of course, if you want to, to learn how, how offensive attacker thinks, you should always have your own lab and, and the lab would have like testing run somewhere and this so you wouldn't want antiviruses to go and scan them and, and keep deleting those tools so i would explode uh, those folders but it will still from time to time go and check and alert me for for suspicious uh, files but it's at the end i've compared uh, compared it uh, with other tools and uh, so far bitdefender is the best for me that's my personal opinion but i wouldn't trust it by itself I would always have a second layer of protection and the second layer of protection is using spy shelter of course spy shelter is anti keylogger anti spyware uh, i would call bitdefender is more like signature based uh, antivirus but spy shelter is more behavior based so it would watch the behavior of an application and it would always alert you for alert you for any suspicious activity okay and it has a built-in firewall of course bitdefender has a firewall spy shelter has a firewall and on top of that uh, all of uh, those two i use i use uh, windows control firewall it, it is actually a third party tool and it's based on the windows firewall itself but if you combine windows control firewall with a windows firewall you has you have a powerful tool that you can really control and make sure not any packet will leave your PC without your permission. So, so that's one of the, the tools I use as a firewall. So Windows Control Firewall is my main firewall. And Spy Shelter is another firewall with a, with a behavior monitoring feature. And Bitdefender is an antivirus with a firewall capability. Uh, I normally switch off the Bitdefender firewall because I'm more like with, I'm happy with Spy Shelter and Windows Control uh, Firewall. Okay, and I would always have Sandboxy application. Sandboxy, actually, it would run its own virtual environment. So if you run an EXE and decide to, to, to test it and you don't know whether it's infected or not, you would right click it and say, run with sandboxy of course sandboxy has many features you can have a container with internet without internet you can test even pdf files we've seen i mean uh, pdf files with uh, zero days exploit so never trust anything i would run everything on sandboxy and i'm not i'm not talking here about my host machine i'm talking about the vm so though it's a vm though i can revert the snapshot I wouldn't uh, test any EXE without running it through Sandboxy and making sure that that it is clean. Okay, okay. There's another ways of doing it. You can always. Uh, I don't have a Bitdefender on a VMware um, uh, images. I only have it on uh, main machine. But of course, you can use Virus Total and scan those EXE before. But it's a headache anyway. If you want, you can do it. I will talk about a tool that does it automatically for you later. Uh, when it comes to messaging, so let's say you need to send an email to someone and of course there is a TLS as an SSL connection and they say they're encrypted but always there is someone who can sit on the middle and, and, and analyze your traffic. So I wouldn't trust my, my email to be sent open, especially if it has sensitive information. So I normally use PGP, which has been adopted by Semantic. But if you don't want to pay for it, you can use, uh, if you don't want to pay for PGP desktop, you can always use WinGPG and it's free tool. 
open source, you can always download it and use it. But never send your, your classified emails openly on the net because there's definitely someone will be watching out there. You can be sitting on a, on a coffee shop uh, connected to a free Wi-Fi and someone will be there and watching your data. So always be careful. Uh, okay, what about for for uh, non-encrypted traffic, which is not based on PGP? What what would you use? I would always use a VPN. So it's a virtual private uh, network. Uh, I'm I'm using my own tool, which can be found on uh, dg77.com. It is called Stealth Walker, and I would use Stealth Walker on my main host. And on the VM, I would set as NAT instead of uh, bridge on the network settings. And that would allow me to use uh, my, my host uh, VPN on, on the VM image. If I want to make it more complicated, I would have my Stealth Worker running here, one version. And the other version of Stealth Worker inside the VM. But on, on the main, I would have my own VPN server, which I've set up myself. But on the other one, I would buy a VPN provider from with, using like a cryptocurrency. So I'm anonymous. I'm using anonymous provider. And that would be on top of the, the, the VPN that I've set up. So my traffic would go to the anonymous uh, VPN provider. And from there, it would go to the to my original VPN provider, and then at the end, it would go to the destination. So sometimes I do that, and it works perfectly. It's just double layer of 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 hiding yourself. Uh, of course, I would always uh, use uh, DNS encryption, and Stealth Walker comes with a built-in DNS uh, encryption tool. It's an open source project which we have adapted to the Stealth Walker program. Uh, whatever I've said regarding VPN and DNS is all about the PC I'm working on, but you can still have these settings on your router. So modern routers would give you an option to use VPN on it. So you can run VPN over there and run another VPN on your host machine. You can always, instead of using your ISP DNS, would, I would recommend never use your ISP DNS, I would always set up my own DNS on the router plus DNS encrypt on, on uh, my PC. I wouldn't be able to use DNS encrypt over there because it requires uh, EXE and most of the routers are Linux based. But recently I've heard about Cloudflare DNS and Cloudflare D DNS is, they say it's encrypted. So Okay, so after all of that and if you're still paranoid and you think okay let me go and buy some coins and i need to log into to to an exchange like bitrex or binance i've talked about uh, ex, uh, exchanges on my previous uh, video so if i need to access binance but i need to make sure that the ssl which i'm seeing with the fingerprints is actually from binance it's not from my neighbors Okay, so so they could poison my Wi-Fi and and they could they could send me fake certificates. So how do I make sure that it's actually from Binance? Okay, uh, we have developed a tool. It's called SSLI, and it's free, by the way. Uh, Stealth Walker is not free, but SSLI is free, and you can enter Binance.com and or Bitrex.com, scan, and it will tell you if the certificate is fake or not. So that's the easy method of doing it. Uh, other tools that I use to, to protect uh, my PC uh, are Process Explorer. So, so I would always monitor my processes. So my best tools, best two tools that I use is one of them is Process Hacker and the other one is uh, System Explorer. And of course, the one I meant, which has a built-in virus total scan, is System Explorer. So you just right-click on the EXE you're suspicious, and you can say "Scan via virus total," and it will give you the results. Okay. When it comes to web browsers, 
what do I use? I don't need, okay, there are many security browsers there, but I'm not fond of them. I like more stability because browsing is the main thing that I do every day and I'm, I'm doing it on a VM. So anyway, even if the browser is not secure, like I'm kind of okay as long as it meets the standard standards and uh, the one I'm using is Waterfox. Waterfox is a fork of uh, Firefox and why didn't I use Firefox instead and I use uh, Waterfox because when it comes to 150 tabs you're working with 150 tabs uh, Waterfox I found it is uh, is more stable on handling those uh, multiple tabs so I decided to stick with Waterfox I would always synchronize my bookmarks, so I always have the same bookmarks whenever I go. Of course, I wouldn't use a naked browser without plugins because it's not secure. So I would always enhance my web browser with plugins. And those plug plugins I'll, I'll be talking about, they're available on Firefox, Waterfox, and some of them are also available on Chrome. So. I use uh, one of the, I'll be listing the, the plugins and the plugins I'm using, uh, first one is uh, real-time IP check. So yeah, so I use VPNs and I use whatever I use to hide my identity. I have to make sure when I'm visiting a site, my IP is the one I want to be uh, revealed. So, so what do I need? I need something just to tell me, okay, this is your current IP, you're browsing with this IP. So real-time IP check would give you that on your browser. Of course, there is a leakage of, uh, of uh, VPN and uh, where you can have a VPN, but still your ISP IP would be revealed. And to prevent that, you should always uh, d uh, disable uh, WebRTC. You can do it manually in Firefox or Waterfox through About and Config. But if you need a plugin, I use it's called Disable WebRTC. You just click on it and it will dis disable uh, that leakage. I also use uh, a plugin called uh, Flagfox because whenever I, I, I visit a site, I need to know where is it hosted. So if I'm buying from uh, from uh, uh, eBay, uh, I'm expecting it to be hosted in US or whatever, Netherlands. But if I see it hosted in X country, then that would be suspicious whether I am on eBay or I'm on a different site which I'm not supposed to be in. So a flag would always indicate me that I'm visiting the site which I'm supposed to be in. I also use uBlock Origin to block, you know, you can block uh, pop-ups, uh, you can block cookies, tracking control, it has advanced uh, tracking control. Of course, when it comes to web browser, I always switch off tracking, I always browse on a private mode on the browser, so that's something to mention when it comes to browser settings. Uh, of course, there's other tools that work similar, but I prefer Unblock Origin. The other tools that if you would like to try, I don't use them. Uh, there's Ghostry, is very good, and there's Privacy Badger. Sometimes I need to use proxy, so I would have a VPN on my host. I would have anonymous cryptocurrency bot VPN on my VM. And on top of that, I would use a proxy. It's for some reasons I do it, and if I want to, like, if the site wouldn't allow me to to buy the product unless from I'm um, from X country, so I would go to that plugin and I would say, okay, make me as I'm from that country, and it would do it, and I would buy from them. Uh, the the plugin called Browse Sec, so Browse Sec, so. So B R O W S E C, browse sec. Okay. Uh, sometimes you need to to spoof your uh, your uh, agent or your HTTP headers, and uh, the best tool to use is Random Agent Spoofer. That's a plugin on your browser you can use. So if you want to see the mobile version of 
or a website with a normal browser it will always show you the PC version but if you need to see the mobile version you can always use something like random ad and spoofer and it has a lot of things uh, if you are annoyed of being asked of your email on if you need to download a software you don't need to provide your emails to prevent spam so you don't want every time to go and create a new email for that I use uh, Bloody Vikings, it's a, it's a plugin where you can easily right click on the field of email and choose a temporary email, it will paste it for you and you are ready to go. So it's a very handy tool. If you need to chat through your web browser, communicate with someone, of course there is Google chat but I wouldn't trust it for sensitive information. I would always use, uh, use a plugin called CryptoCat and it works perfectly, the encryption is it's been uh, tested, it's open source project, and I would encourage anyone to use it. Okay, what about if I don't trust my VM? And I said, okay, Windows might have a backdoor, I don't know, from, from any vendor that it came from. Uh, what can I use? So if I don't trust Windows and I need a VM that is really secure, I use an operating system which I developed myself it's called Linux Kodachi and that's a different world by itself it's an operating system where if you boot you are automatically hooked into a VPN service uh, you're automatically having your DNS encrypted uh, and you have your Tor ready to run so you can have Tor on top of VPN on top of uh, DNS encryption and of course, you are ho the host machine which you are hosting that VM of Kodachi is also having another VPN. So that's like multiple layer of uh, defense. I would really encourage you to do if you really need to do to use it. It's free, by the way, and you can find it uh, downloaded from uh, dg77.com. Okay, what what do I use for uh, SSH? So when it comes to SSH, I use uh, XShell and I would never use uh, SSH with uh, open password. I would always disable uh, password authentication on the other side of the server. So it's, if it's CentOS, if it's Debian, I would always use keys and I would always harden the SSH connection. I wouldn't use the default uh, SSH uh, connection uh, uh, values. I would always harden them and i won't be talking on how to do it but i've written a blog and this blog i mean it has all the tips about uh, hardening your ssh your linux server so you can go and have a look over there and you'll find the way of uh, doing it and when it comes to transferring uh, files from my pc to the websites that i run i use uh, filezilla which is uh, known but I don't use the normal FTP, so I would never use, though I trust my VPN, I trust whatever layers I'm doing, I would still use another layer of security, and which is simple, it's called uh, explicit FTP over TLS, and that would establish a secure tunnel between you and the server. Okay, I've tried to cover most of the tools that I think they're essential for your uh, privacy and, and uh, PC security of course there are many tools that I haven't mentioned but if you follow what I've told you you would minimize uh, the risk of being attacked uh, to a certain degree which for me I call it a satisfaction so I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching Please subscribe and like and hope to see you again. Thank you very much.